everybody, and welcome back to the Dice Towers Q&A with uh, infrequent contributor, Z Garcia. Uh, all right, let's, uh, can you do me a favor, buddy, and flip over that so that I, I can see, oh, that's a handsome cat. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, hello from Portugal, Michigan, Virginia, Missouri. Oh, so many folks from all over the place. It's very nice to have you all. Uh, I am here to welcome you to a new week and talk about some board games. We're going to talk about some board games, games you've been playing, games I've been playing, things we're looking forward to, all that good stuff. I've got Board Game Geek here pulled up in case I need to look up anything. But other than that, we are good to go. I haven't done one of these uh, Q&As in a while, so I'm excited to see what y'all have come up with since I did one of these. Hello from Philly, hello from Sweden. Very close to each other, those two. Um, Jose Guerrero says, get your cafecito ready, get a, get a little coffee. Uh, we can talk about board games and cats, sure. Hello from Brazil, hello from Mexico, fantastic, man. What a global audience. It's beautiful. All right, all right. Let's see. What did I review this week, folks? You all know better than I do. I reviewed a couple of things I really liked. I reviewed Maya. Came, uh, went up uh, Saturday, I think. And that was cool. Maya was a neat game. It definitely was a, a throwback, old school kind of Euro game. A new design, but... Man, some really neat kind of old school sensibilities in that game. I really liked it. Uh, I liked the, uh, I love games. And again, it reminds me of older Ryan Knizia games or older uh, Michael Schott games in which, you know, you, the theme was barely there, right? It was like just some pick whatever, right? So I'm thinking here of like Hansa from Michael Schott way back in the day. And you would, on your turn, you do A or you do B. And the implications from that are pretty simple still, but then the tactics and the strategy are kind of where the game starts to develop. So just reading the rules, you go, that's it. And then as you play, the game evolves a little bit, and it's still, you know, the games are always around 45 minutes. I love that kind of game. And it does make me feel sort of nostalgic about those kinds of games. And the other one that I liked a lot was uh, Yggdrasil Chronicles. I had a lot of fun with that. Uh, all right, I got a question here from Wolf Force. That's a cool name. Uh, Z, in your top solo games you didn't mention Last Bastion. Did you play it solo or do you play it solo? I think it's my new top solo game ever. Better than all the Honorverse for me. That is amazing. I'm glad you like it so much. You know, I played Last Bastion solo a couple of times and found it incredibly punishing. I thought it was much more punishing solitaire than Ghost Stories ever was. Ghost Stories gave you a little something to do um, to sort of even out the fact that you were alone. You had the ability to sort of, you know, use the powers of the, the missing characters around the table. And Last Bastion doesn't do that, so I found it a lot harder. And I, I, I'm not a major fan of the solitaire mode in it. Now, multiplayer, you play with a full complement of four, fantastic. Really like that. Uh, even with three, great. You get down to two, it's going to be a really punishing game, and then you get down to one, and it felt almost impossible. So uh, that's why I'm not a big fan of it, Solitaire. Uh, all right. What are you drinking? I got some cheap energy drink at a... Uh, I, I, I stopped for fuel this morning and a little pick-me-up, and I got some energy drink called Quake. I don't know. It's cheap. It's pretty good. Uh, all right, let's see here. Uh, Nick says, if I go and get coffee, I'll miss something. Nick, go, go, go get coffee. Go, go get yourself a nice cuppa. That's tea, right? Uh, did you play The Crew? Thoughts? Yeah, I played The Crew. I liked it. Um, I, I wasn't blown away by it. I think that was hype, though. I think I, by the time I played it, I played with Tom and, and some of the guys... You know, I had heard so much about it by that point. Oh, this rewrites the book on trick-taking. And I suppose to a degree it does. But 
it's also a, tr uh, a tr tricky game. I was going to say it's also a hard game to get played a lot. It's it feels like it's pulling off a trick, which is neat, but it's pulling off a trick almost just to because it can do it. So I don't think it's going to get a lot of table time with me. I'd rather just if I'm going to play a trick taking game, I'll play one that's a little more traditional with the twists, you know, and then little bells and whistles, but uh, but it's not, that one's really outside the box. And so I thought from a design point of view, very clever, interesting, outside of the box for sure. Not something I'll play a lot, I think. All right, uh, Dr. Mask says, hello, uh, do you like hot beverages, prefer tea or coffee? I don't actually like hot beverages. I very rarely drink anything hot, but between tea and coffee, I am more likely, you'll, you're more likely to see me drinking coffee than drinking tea. And if I am having coffee, though, it's likely iced coffee. Oh, hold on. My uh, chat here moved on me. Thoughts on Ginkopolis reprint. Have you played it? I did play Ginkopolis a long time ago now. I don't know. Three years ago, I guess that's not really a long time. About three years ago, I did not like it, but I'm glad it's coming back into print because I know a lot of folks were clamoring to get their hands on it, so that's great. Uh, which do you prefer, old print Yggdrasil or Yggdrasil Chronicles? I do like the new one better. I think there's more game there. I think it's more robust. It's more interesting mechanically. It's more uh, engaging. I thought the old one got repetitive a l a much more quickly. I think in the new one... You could, I could see some repetition setting in, but not to the degree that it happened in the first game. So, yes, I like the new one better. Uh, all right, let's see. Hey, Z, have you had a chance to play Terra Mara? I have not played that game. Uh, da, 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 da. Somebody's asking about supplies and like the availability of some of the Essen games. I don't know. I think they're just smaller prints, print runs. Bah, bah, bah. Uh, somebody says, Michael Jones says, I really miss your quirky game segment. Any chance you would make that a series? Uh, I ran through a lot of games doing the segment back on... Uh, board game blender so probably not but you know I never say never these things kind of come and go do you have a shelf of shame if so what's on it not really I, I don't I have a few games I haven't played but it's a really small number actually um, I would say it's about I'll put it at about 2% right now yeah. So, no, they're kind of scattered, too. I don't have them. You know, I think people who, I, I assume people, when they say shelf of shame, they do mean that they keep it on one shelf. I don't. They're kind of scattered all over the place. But I'm also not worried about it. I don't care if I, there's a game or two that I haven't quite gotten around to yet. It doesn't bother me. There's so many. Uh, it's an interesting question. Have you managed to play some game a lot in 2020 or too busy? Moving on to the next review. Uh, that is an interesting question. I'm trying to think if there is something I have played a lot. It's happened before where I'll sort of get hooked by something and I just I keep playing that thing. You know, it's happened with uh, Blue Moon, uh, the original Blue Moon, which then became Blue Moon Legends. Happened with that game. It's happened with a few things. I don't think it's happened this year yet. But I have been able to play a couple of things just for fun here and there. Not a lot, maybe once or twice, but that's been good. So no, not yet. Those are pretty rare for me, I'll admit. Uh, it seems like everyone is enjoying the guest contributors. I'm glad to hear that because I, I, I agree. I, um, it's, been, it's been fantastic having folks uh, over to give us their point of view and just sort of the dynamic being so different from person to person is really neat. It's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's just nice to have folks over. 
Uh, do you think you could see yourself being a guest on other channels? Sure, if I wasn't so busy, <laughs> I could see that. Um, it's unlikely, though, to happen anytime soon just because, uh, yeah, it's always, I'm always doing something here, so I need to uh, just, you know, do my own thing. Uh, all right, let's see. Mentat here says, if you... If my crew liked Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, but that it was too free form and long, do you recommend Detective City of Angels? Sure, I do. Yeah, I, I'll be aware that game is not cooperative unless you want it to be, Detective City of Angels, but I absolutely recommend it. If you like the setting, you like the look of the game, it's awesome. Detective City of Angels is an, an awesome game. Uh, Amy here says that they're purchasing Tiny Epic Zombies and I understand that there are five ways to play it and I have not played it unfortunately so I could not give you any help with which way you should play it. Sorry, not tried that one. Alright, good morning says Pete Shirey. Good morning my friend, good to see you Pete. I am, <laughs> hope I'm having a great Sharktastic Monday of course Pete. And you, my friend, always make every day sharktastic. He just, Pete loves, loves sharks. I don't know. He just does. Westworld Season 3 Episode 1 was excellent. I haven't watched Westworld yet. I've, uh, I've heard you know, both good and bad about the show, but I should probably check that out. The last thing I saw that just was awesome was um, Watchmen. So good. Such a good miniseries. Uh, pa, 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 pa. I have never played claustrophobia before, says Ian Cho, Cho, uh, Cho, and I'm thinking about getting claustrophobia 1643 and its expansions. Which expansions would you recommend? Well, for first of all, there there are no expansions for claustrophobia 1643. So if you see any expansions for claustrophobia, like the uh, what is it, Furor Sanguinis and whatever the other one's called, something like that, those are for the original claustrophobia, not claustrophobia 1643, okay? But they're both good, the two that exist, and so I would I would say get whatever and just you more. Uh, I suppose I would get them in the order they would release. So the one with the big dinosaur is the second. You might want to get the other one first, then the big dinosaur. Assuming you are talking about the original print, the new one, 1643, has no expansions outside of the box. Have you guys received Tang Garden? And will you do a review? I don't think we have received that yet. Kabuki Kid, hello! Good to see you. Always, always. Uh, Clay Delvic, I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I'm sorry if I'm not. Is asking, you're not, uh, is saying, you're not a huge Kickstarter backer. Why? And how many games do you back per year? Uh, I, I am not a, a patient man. <laughs> I think that's largely it, the idea that, you know, there are so many good games available now, and if I back one, I am just sort of waiting for a year and a half, right? I also, a lot of folks I know who back on Kickstarter can back it and then forget about it. And when it, you know, like, to give them your info, whatever, and they send you that, but then, like, when it shows up, you go, ha-ha, look at this, I forgot I backed this, or, oh, I didn't know this was coming. I watch these things like a hawk after I back it. So the waiting is so long for me. And, and you know, that's, that's partly why. As far as how many I back each year, how long have I been on Kickstarter? I don't know. But right now, I think I have 22 things I've ever backed. And some of those are just decks of playing cards. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Three a year, two a year, maybe. Very few. All right. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. <clears throat> okay, Manuel Molina says, Hey, Z, other than claustrophobia, which other dungeon crawler do you like? Hmm. I like Zombicide, Black Plague. I like uh, Deep Madness. All right. I like uh, Fireteam Zero. All right. I like the others, if that counts a lot. <clears throat> what else? 
Oh, there's not that many. It's not a genre that I am a big fan of. I also think there's a lot there. The games are so big, have so many rules, that it's hard to sort of be into too many of them, I find, for me anyway. So there's very few. I, uh, I would say Claustrophobia and the others are my favorites. And uh, Zombicide Black Plague, maybe. Yeah. Have you played Claim with its three to four player variant? Um, no, I don't think so. Heather Casino says, good morning, guys. Good morning, Heather. Good to see you. All right. Hey, Z, about Targi, says Kyle Cesar. My wife and I usually like to play heavy Euro games or two, like Lisboa, Mombasa. I saw your review of Targi and I was interested. Do you think my wife would like it too? Thanks. I do. Yeah, I do. It's not as heavy. There's not as much going on as, say, Mombasa, maybe. But, yeah, it sort of, it's going to light up the same parts of the brain, I think. So, yeah, I think, uh, I think you two will like it. <clears throat> Hello from the Ukraine, Mike Bike. Awesome. Hey, Z, what are your thoughts on Sentinels of the Multiverse? Whoo, Kevin, I haven't played the game in years and years, and I remember not being that interested in it. I thought it was fiddly. I thought there was a ton going on in it. I find that in a lot of these superhero games. I don't know what it is. They, they put so much in there to make it, to simulate more superhero-y stuff. I really don't understand why, actually, why the game can't be a little more straightforward. But, yeah, I thought it was uh, overwrought. But, again, I am speaking from having played, like, twice, I think, years and years ago. Ba 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 da ba. Hey Z, who's your favorite comedian? Probably Dave Chappelle. I think he's extremely sharp. He's very funny, but he's also a really smart guy. All right, should I buy Tainter Grail? I don't know. I haven't played it. Sorry. Um. Hello, Z. What draws you to Empires of the North over Res Arcana? Huh. Well, they're not that similar. I suppose they're both card games with a few sort of combos. I think it's more thematic. I think it's a little more uh, immersive. I don't think Res Arcana is immersive. I think Res Arcana is... You are... It's also... Res Arcana is extremely strategic. As in... You are you are just putting sort of a long-term plan into effect. The game's short. It's like 45 minutes, but that's what you're doing. And Empires of the North has a mix of strategy and reacting tactics. And I like a mix a little more. And again, it's just prettier, uh, or, or not prettier, but more. There's a one-to-one -one correlation. When I do, when I turn this card sideways, it means I'm, I'm you know, uh, sending this little guy out to farm. I get you know, uh, stone. You don't farm stones. You know what I mean. Come on. It's Monday. Stop asking me things about farming stones. Whoo, quake. It's making me quake in my boots. I find Idrisil Chronicles tree too fiddly for me. It looked cool, but not at home. Uh, I agree it's a little on the fiddly side. If you have the ability to leave it built, you can do that. Uh, it's cool. It's a cool game. So, I get it. It's kind of... It's functional. I mean, it's part of the game. You need it to play the game to a degree. But, yeah, it's a little fiddly. If it doesn't bother you too much, I would still give it a go. It's a neat game. Hey, Z, did you ever play Leaving Earth? I did not. I never did play that one. The cover always looked cool. I always wanted to. ba 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 ba, -ba. How about saying draw and draw as an alternative to flip and write? Uh, once these things, you know, settle in, you have a hard time changing people's minds, but you can certainly try. Flip and write is a little, flows a little more easily, trippingly off the tongue, so to speak. Favorite co-op at the moment? Man, I don't 
No, like the one I've been playing the most technically is Yggdrasil Chronicles, but um, yeah, I don't know. That's got to be it right now, but it's not saying, I don't mean it's my favorite, it's just the one I've been playing the most lately, you know. Whoa, it jumped. No! Why do you do this to me, comments? Bang, bang, bang. Hold on, everybody. While I look for where the conversation's at. Uh, let's see. Good morning, good morning. Announcement coming March 19th for Arkham Horror LCG. Thoughts, guess, insider information. I got nothing. I didn't even know the announcement was coming. <laughs> um, what could it be? I don't know. Another standalone scenario, like side story type thing, maybe? No idea. I don't know. Maybe it's just the next cycle, or did they announce that already? I really don't know. Hi, Z. Just wanted to say thanks for the historical top ten. It was the funniest one yet. I think you were disadvantaged by following Liz. I was definitely disadvantaged by being included in the list, I'll tell you that. <laughs> that was the, I don't know if it was the funniest top 10 list. It was certainly the most embarrassing top 10 list. But folks seem to get a laugh out of it, so I'm glad for that, question mark. Um, it was fine. I'm just, I'm glad people had a good time. And there were a lot of games on the list that we don't normally feature, which I think is great. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Nick is back with coffee. That's what I'm talking about. You were gone for five minutes? How long is it? Take to get coffee, I, I guess. You have to make it. Um, okay, Nick, I will recap briefly for you. Uh, talked about some claustrophobia. Talked about some other stuff. Yeah, you're caught up. You're good. Do you have a favorite hat to wear? What am I wearing? Um, it's probably the one that says, uh, I have two that I really, really like just the way they feel. And it is uh, one that says Iceland on it and one that says uh, Bochum on it. I like both of those. They're just really comfortable. Uh, somebody's asking here, Zergic. I hope I'm saying that right. Which do you prefer and why? Empires of the North or Marvel Champions? Very much Empires of the North. I thought Marvel Champions was fine. But Empires of the North is amazing. They're really, they're very, very different. One you can play solitaire, the other one, uh, or one is like made to be almost solitaire, two players. The other one you could play solo, but it's a variant. One's co-op, the other one's, those are super, they're super different. All right. <clears throat> uh, Sin R. I'm guessing. How did you meet Tom? And Joe in the Dice Tower. Well, I met him when he moved here to the area, to Florida, uh, at a local game group. And we just sort of, you know, play games together, hit it off a little bit. Eventually, after months, I suppose, he said, hey, you know, I, I, I think you could be funny on camera. And I was like, please, fool. I've been on stage. I didn't know I could be funny on camera. But, you know, I kept it inside. I didn't say that. I thought it super loudly. I was worried he might hear me in my brain juices, but he didn't. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I showed up on a couple of videos early on just because he wanted to have me on. And then did a bunch of stuff with him. Then we did top tens for a long time. And then eventually, I ended up working here with him. But yeah, I just sort of, we met when he moved here and then did some stuff together. Have you ever gone scuba diving? I have not. Snorkeling, yeah. Back in my youth, in my youth, not scuba diving though, no. Any movies you're looking forward to? It seems like you, it seemed like you enjoyed Knives Out, which we also loved. Great. Uh, what's in your radar? Maybe Tenet, New Mutants. I don't know what Tenet is. I haven't seen that. New Mutants looks like a horror movie, right? I don't like that. 
I want to see Black Widow. Um, other than that, I really don't know. I'm sort of still catching up from some older stuff. I just uh, rewatched last night uh, Ford v Ferrari. So good. I love that movie. So, so good. Ba -ba -ba -ba. What is it with the Empires of the North questions? Good lordy. Do you suffer from FOMO, fear of missing out? I think everybody suffers from that a little bit. It's, it's to what degree you feel like, oh, I'm not going to get to play that. Do I deal with that? Sure, I think everybody does a little bit. Anthony Chavez is asking about my top three solo games of 2019. I don't know how to answer, mostly because I'm not sure what came out in 2019, so it's just going to be sort of me guessing at stuff. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I don't know. Fito Velado, I believe, is asking if it's worth getting to send second edition with all the expansions. That's probably really expensive, but I'm not a big Descent fan, so I don't know. If you love it, you should probably get it, and then maybe get the expansions later. That's my usual recommendation. Don't jump into something with all the expansions just because they exist, A, eh? and you think you might like them. Make sure you like them first. All right, somebody's asking, what does Z stand for? It stands for my first name. It's my initial. Kabuki Kid, Love Target, and the English version of the expansion is finally coming. I know. I've been waiting for this thing for, it's been out in German for years, so it's about time. Max, what is your ethnicity? I am Hispanic. I am Cuban. Oh, shoot. It moved. Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, Rob Nicholson has an interesting question. Hi, Z. Hello, Rob. Suppose a new game came out, which you loved. How many times do you think you'd have to play it to justify putting it in your all-time top ten? Oh, man. That's a very nebulous question, you know. But I don't know. A few times is enough. I mean, realistically, how many times am I going to play in my lifetime? It depends on the game, right? That's the thing. Some games I've played hundreds of times. Some games I've played ten, and I love them. And I would say they're some of my favorite games, right? So, I don't know. Enough to make sure it wasn't a fluke. How about that, you know? Enough to, to where the margin for error, and by that I mean bad at play experiences, Enough where I know that the uh, the percentage of bad play experiences is insignificant. How about that? Uh, what happens to Thunderbirds in your recent top 100 games? Nothing. I'm loving it. I got my copy still. It's just 100 is a very specific number. So that's what it is. <laughs> that's very sweet. Shredda says, can you start training other people how to give game reviews? You are the best out there. That's very sweet. Thank you. And no, I will not do that. <laughs> that sounds like, um, well, unnecessary for one thing. Everybody's doing fine doing their own game reviews. But it also sounds hard. Richard Sand Saunders, excuse me, says, you seem to look warm on both Champions and Legendary. Is there a superhero game you really like? I don't think so, actually. I, and you're right. I am a little lukewarm on both of those. I think they're fine. I think they're both okay. I'm not... I don't think I have a superhero-themed game that I think is awesome. I like superhero stuff a lot. The movies are great. I love, I love movies about the stuff. I'm not a big comic book reader. Maybe that's it. I've read some comics, but it's not something I'm really into. And so when I play a game about that, it's either... I game with heroes I know from the comics, and that's neat, but I'm not necessarily into playing a game about it, or it's made up heroes, and I have no, I don't feel any, you know, kindred 
what is it, kinship? Is that right? Uh, to uh, to the stuff I'm supposed to be inhabiting. So that's partly it. Just not a thing that I'm I'm particularly into. All right. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Jose Guerrero says, and now I have to delete all my stone farming questions. I was halfway typing. Sorry, buddy. Jamie W says, what do you like in Everdale that's different from other worker placement resource collection games? I like, uh, you know, oh, this is, that's a good idea. I think I'll do that. I should probably write that down. I just had an idea for uh, uh, one of those comparison videos I've been doing, um, the uh, Echoes videos. Anyway, what I like about it is um, I like the fluidity of the game. I like that on your turn. It's not just a worker placement game. Your turn could be a worker placement turn or it could be a card placing, the card, you know, deployment turn. And I like that about it. You're gathering resources, you're gathering cards. Some of those things take placing a worker, but not, not all of them do. I think I like that about it. I like that this little world operates with me bringing new little characters into the world or going someplace and picking up twigs or picking up resin or whatever. Uh, I think that's it. You know, it's a minor thing. It's a feeling thing more than anything else. Ah, ba 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 ba. Z, who wins between Cthulhu and Zombie Godzilla? That's such a good question, but that's more like a this or that question at the end, right? Cthulhu versus Zombie Godzilla. It's got to be Cthulhu, man. Come on. He's an elder god. Zombie Godzilla is just some fool, some, some silly lizard who's dead and, and resurrected. Does he still breathe fire? I don't know. So now I can't stop thinking about it. Okay, John Hale says, what is your favorite Shakespearean play? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Probably The Tempest, I think. Um, all right. Bum, 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 bum. How does the Dust Tower choose what games are play tested for a Kickstarter preview? Uh, I don't. That's, you know, that we have people in place who manage that. It's a business question. That's a Tom Vassell question, man. Don't ask me any Tom Vassell questions. Let's talk about games. Z, who is your favorite investigator in the Arkham Horror line of games? I don't, I don't know them all that well, but I would have to maybe say the reporter guy. What's his name? Rex? That dude is cool. Z, what's the best way to introduce someone to Spirit Island? I have no idea. I suck at that game. That was really complicated. Oh, no. The Family Showdown is here. Oh, Snapple. It's probably Hunter, if I know anything about the Family Showdown. <laughs> Z, do you have a favorite small card game at the moment? I mean, I have a amigo, Schmidt Spieler. Uh, new, blah, 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 blah. okay, um, I've been playing some, some X nimped it's not new, but I've been, I've been liking that. I haven't discovered any new little card games in a while that I'm really loving, so, no. Which is your favorite Azul? That's a good question. It is, I think it's the second one. I go between the second and the third. But I think the stained glass of Sintra might be my favorite. The new one's really good too. <coughs> Z, what will be the nominees and ultimate winner for most overused theme? Well, right now, as of this year, it has to be bees. There are so many bee-themed games, and they just keep popping up. So I would say as of right now, as a, as a micro trend in the industry, games about bees and pollen and honey and all that stuff. Uh, 
which is fine. You know, it's not like there's so many that I can't find another theme. I'm just saying it's a weird little mini, uh, micro trend I've noticed. Uh, all right, Gator Dave says, do you think simpler old style games like the recently reviewed Maya still have a place in today's board game market? Absolutely, man. I do. I do. I think we've forgotten to a degree the simplicity of, of tactical games, you know? Like how to make a game strategic, interesting, and simple and straightforward. And I know some things don't go hand in hand with that, like theme and immersion. Doesn't really work that well with that. But it seems like the trend now is if a game is light, it's also kind of dumb. You know, it's sort of a very light game, which is fine. Don't get me wrong. I, I, I'm happy to play a dumb game if that's what the situation calls for. But if you want to play something that's a little more strategic, there's a lot more rules usually. You know, that's how you innovate is by adding complexity. And so I like seeing games that are able to take it back to you know, sort of boiling down a game to its absolute essentials and giving you that and letting you play in a very simple uh, little box. So, yeah, I like it. I think there's a place for it. Sure. All right, let's see. Skib here says they had an amazing Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition game yesterday. Four tiles left. Everyone had two or three workers on the center tile to hopefully save the day. And then the malfunction card came up. Uh, yeah, yeah, that game is very tight. It's very tight, and there's a lot of granularity to how difficult or easy you can make it, so love it. Oh, shoot. I don't know why it does that. I hate you, computer! There we go. <laughs> I'm sorry, computer. I love you. I apologize. Don't eat me. <laughs> Tenet is the new Christopher Nolan film. Okay. I haven't seen a trailer for that, I think. I do like me some Christopher Nolan. We call him Chris No-No. Do you think Everdell and Empires of the North are too similar to justify owning in a small collection? No, I don't, but I also don't subscribe to that whole idea of like, oh, I only have space for 30 games. So I must have a game of each kind. Even though I hate dexterity games, I must have a game that fills the dexterity game category. No, you don't. If you hate dexterity games, then don't own one. And get yourself another worker placement game because you love them, you know. So, no, are they too similar? No, I don't think so. It depends what you like. All right. <laughs> All right, that's a weird question. <laughs> okay, Gnome says, Say hi to me, Z. I'm munching pancakes. Yeah. Hello. Nom, 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 nom. I love these questions. Should I get Flashpoint Fire Rescue? No. Oh, no, wait, wait. Yes. Yes, you should. <laughs> Do uh, Yes. Sure. It's yes. Mm -hmm. You should get it. I, would, I mean, you, you kind of need it. You, you definitely should get it. Have you done, or do you have any plans of doing, a top 10 games that need to be reprinted? No. God, largely because I don't ever know what's out of print. In fact, I, got a, I get a decent amount of garbage about, oh, you mentioned this game, but it's out of print, you jerk. Sorry, I don't keep on top of what's in and out of print at any given moment. I just don't know. Is Summoner War 2nd Edition happening? I have no idea, my friend. Are you a big fan of Cafe Guano? Uh, sometimes, if I need the boost. <laughs> it's good stuff. It's one of the few things I'll drink warm because it's a very small amount. Uh, 
Is there anything medium lightweight that's worth kickstarting at the moment? You want to do some crowdsourcing. Uh, you want to turn, t tune in on Wednesdays when we talk about kickstarters. Come on back for that. Are you a fan of the increasing prop popularity of app-driven board games being released? Sure, but that's because it's such a tiny, tiny, tiny percentage of the games being released. You mentioned there Lord of the Rings, uh, Mansions of Madness, Lord of the Rings Journeys, Chronicles of Crimes, etc. That's three you're able to mention. Mentioning another three is probably tough, and some of those are pretty old. The only one there that's fairly new is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. So, yeah, I'm a fan of them. But that's also because they are it's so, so rare, you know. <clears throat> All right, let's see. Uh, Jen the Wild says, can you tell us about the process of making a review? How many plays on average with different people, the same people all the time, different player counts? How deep do, how deep do you go before releasing the review? Uh, it really depends on the game, Jan. It uh, normally, the way I say it is, normally if I play a game and I absolutely adore it, like it blows my mind, it's going to get fewer reviews before I do a, it's going to get fewer plays, I'm sorry, before I do a review. You know, I might play it twice to confirm that it wasn't some super weird fluke. I might play it three times. Uh, if I play a game and I absolutely hate it, I thought it was... A broken mess. I might play it once and do a review. I might try it again just to make sure again that it wasn't a fluke, something was off, or something seemed wrong, like did I misread a rule? This seems way broken. It's the stuff in the middle that's harder. And so when it comes to that, I'll normally play it more times than the extremes. I'll normally try to mix it up. If it has a solo mode and I'm interested in talking about it, I'll play that, otherwise I might not have time to play the solo mode, and if so, I won't talk about it in the in the video. And I always make sure that the people I'm playing with, I kind of I kind of feel them out while we're playing, but then there's also usually a, a nice little, you know, my uh, brief discussion at the end of what did you think, you know, that sort of thing. Um, just to get feedback on helping me get a sense of what the 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 feel around the table is. It's still a microcosm of what that game might, you know, how that game might come across in the, out in the market, but it helps me get an idea of what everybody's thinking, you know. So yeah, that's kind of the long and short of it. That's sort of how I go. But again, it depends on the game, how long the game is, also if I can play it a bunch of times or not. Uh, hopefully that answers your question. All right, David Phillips says, Z, I'm looking to get into Subterra. Should I jump in with one or two? I don't think two's available yet, David, so you might want to just get one. It's a great game. Uh, <laughs> D-Dubs says, you should dress like Tom during one of your top ten lists. I think I did that once at a convention. I wore, like, one of his hats and a jacket. It's extremely warm under the lights. Aaron says, did you like board games as a kid? Or did you start playing later? I started playing later. I didn't have access to board games as a kid. Um, I liked the idea of playing things as a kid, but I, you know, there were no board games. Uh, so, like in high school, that's when I got into it. Do you play a game every day? Says Sill. No, no, not every day. Usually, when I do play, I play more than one thing, though. That's the difference. Robert says, hi Z, do you know any Cuban game designers? No, I don't. There's not that many Cubans in the world, you know. <laughs> uh, so no, I don't know. Ever thought of designing your own game? If so, what about? Yeah, a couple of times, but I never even get past like the just sort of nebulously thinking about it stage. Putting together a prototype seems, ex seems extremely daunting, so... If I ever even think about that, I just sort of look at a shelf and go, oh, that game is done. I'll just go play that. So, no, not really. I don't think it'd be particularly good if I did. Uh, Yellow Geek Bear. I don't know about Nemesis. Sorry, I haven't played that, so can't help you there. 
Danny, I don't know what the best resource for acquiring past Arkham Horror LCG campaigns is. I think they just go out of print sometimes, you know. That's an interesting que question, Jose. Uh, is there an IP out there, an intellectual property, that you adore so much that it would be near impossible to resist buying a game with? You gotta have those streetcar named Desire minis. Stella, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, no, and the reason I know that is because I would have said if they had, before they had released a game with a Fallout theme that Fallout is a game I would not have resisted. But I think it's okay. I did not rush out and pick it up when it came out. So no. Not really. You know what it is? I, I don't necessarily like mixing my types of entertainment. That's what it is. You know? Like, I was just talking about Ford v. Ferrari. I like that movie. I like it as a movie. If they came out with a board game, which was Ford v. Ferrari, the board game, I wouldn't be interested. Just like I might not want to read the book to the movie, and I might not want to listen to, you know, it's just... I love original worlds in books, and I love original worlds in board games, but a Star Wars, the board game, whatever, is fine, but it doesn't make me any more interested in that, in that thing than a made-up sci-fi world, as long as it's done well, you know? So, no, I'm not, I'm not an IP person. I like, I like it. I, I like lots of things. Um... I think for me it might work better, in fact, the other way. If they made a Fallout film, I would be like, ooh, okay. Or like when they made uh, The Dark Tower, the movie, which was not very good. But I was interested in that, you know, because I liked the books, even though they got worse as they went. <clears throat> uh, okay. I'm getting into the other, says Nero's Fiddle. <laughs> I love it. Uh, which expansion do you recommend first? I guess I would get one of the packs, like the, uh, what are they called? Uh, Omega, like factions, you know, which give you more people. Or maybe one of the sins. Just pick one. I don't know. I did do a video or videos sort of ranking the different uh, sins you can play against. I would check that out. I talk about it a little bit in those. Uh, right now, it's it's been a while, so uh, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head. But I would ch I would look that up. I have a video covering a little more about the game. Good luck to you getting into that game. It's awesome. It's always Hunter says Kabuki Kid. <laughs> uh, did I miss anything? No, I don't think so. Nothing. I like it. Howdy, folks. Sounds exactly like Hunter. <laughs> uh, where are you? Come on, comments. X Nim never got a North American release, did it? Says Kabuki Kid. I don't know. Where did I pick it up then? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't know that. Is your shirt blue with white stripes or white with blue stripes? That's like a matter of opinion, man. Have you seen Color Out of Space? I have not, but I heard from some friends who saw it who actually really liked it. I thought it looked kind of hokey, but... Hello Z, Fox in the Forest versus Fo Fox... For the little... Hello Z, Fox in the Forest versus Fox in the Forest duet. Have you tried? Which is best? Thanks for Q&A. Uh, I haven't played the duet game yet. I think we have a copy of it, and I need to get on that, but we haven't played it yet. I like the other one quite a bit. I heard it was now, Duet was cooperative? 
All right, let's see. It's the bee's knees. What did you work in prior to the Dice Tower? I was teaching theater. And then before that, I was doing theater. And then before that, I was working at Walmart or something. <laughs> Is Arkham Horror LCG the most immersive story-based game in your opinion? Is there something better? Is there something better story-wise? Sure, I mean, there's something better. You know, anything that is a story-driven game is probably better, right? I mean, there is more story. The problem is not whether it's just whether there is more story. It's, it's whether the mechanisms in the game both give you a robust experience and kind of get out of the way and let the story sort of bubble up to the top. For me, it's probably Arkham right now, yeah. Um, but that immerses, you know, I, I find any game that is, that has a cool enough sort of theme to allow me to get into it, you know, like, I'll give you an example, Atlantis Rising 2nd Edition, it's always the same scenario. But, I can definitely, because that game is interesting and captivating, has a cool sort of thematic premise. There's no story, but there's a cool premise. I can develop my own story as we play each time, you know. Um, so my requirements for story are pretty low. Uh, all right. Yes, I did mean crowd surfing, Kabuki Kid. I never remember what that show is called. I, I get it wrong every time here in the office, too. I'm like, crowd sourcing, crowd funding, crowd surfing. That's it. <laughs> yes, crowd surfing. Do you own all the expansions for Arkham LCG? I believe so, but I'm not caught up with playing them. I just like to have them all, my precious. Do you think the Deus expansion is worth it if you can find it? Yes, absolutely. It is so good. Favorite musical? Yes. <clears throat> what is my favorite musical? Oh, so many good choices. So many. Cats, the film edition I heard was tremendous, stupendous. Um, uh, cabaret, maybe? There's got to be a better choice than that. Oh, I know. In the Heights. That's my favorite musical. Yeah. Bang 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 bang. That one is the best. Uh, I am looking forward to. Actually, I think that show is. Well, I know it's getting made into a movie, and I think that's coming out this year. So that's a movie I'm looking forward to. To answer someone's previous question, in the heights. Oh, you don't know me at all. Hello, Z from Cyprus. I am considering which Lacerda game to get for two players. Any favorite? Come on now. I, I haven't played any of them. I would get... Lisboa. It's the first one I remembered. <laughs> I got that music in my head. Y'all are the worst. All right, let's see. Have you played? Tra have I tried playing Scythe solo? I don't think so. It looks really intimidating, solitaire. I did play not too long ago two player, and I liked that. That was good. 
Z, have you tried playing uh, Dual Clash Poker from Oink Games? I saw it somewhere a while ago. It, no, I haven't played it, uh, and it honestly did not look that captivating, but I haven't given it a go. I do like from them the Kobayakawa, which then got picked up by Yellow. Is that right? Kobayakawa, yeah. Are there any rules that are easy to miss or get wrong in the others? My friend has the game, but thought it was really unbalanced and broken. I feel like he may be missing something. Um, I don't know. I think the problem with that game is a lot of people... You have... Uh, most people find that the, the, the bad player, right, the sins player, wipes the floor with the good guys. Like, oh, they roll so many more dice than I do, etc., etc. There's a couple of things. Your people, your pool of people are definitely a resource in that game. And most folks don't take the corruption, voluntary corruption, to roll more dice, do more stuff. The sins player gets all of their symbols during combat from just their roll. The good player gets a lot of their symbols during combat from built-in stats, like a built-in defense, for example, and symbols on their corruption track. So use it. You gotta, you gotta give yourself more, because you, you will be rolling physically fewer dice quite a bit of the time, but there are virtual faces that you have that you gotta account for. I think that's usually the issue. I don't know if there's any, I mean, yeah, there's always little rules that you might miss, but there's a lot of good resources online for that game. So, there is that. Uh, let's see. All right, let me see where I'm at because I'm having a hard time. That's an interesting question. I wish I had an answer to that. Uh, Z, what's the worst expansion to the best game? Man, I bet I have a good answer to that, too, if I wasn't, you know, if my memory wasn't garbage. Um, what is a great game that has a garbage expansion? Oh, man. I don't know. I know, like, some of the expansions to Race for the Galaxy were less than over, you know, less than thrilling for me. Um, I don't know. Oof, that's a good one. That might make a good top ten list. In the Heights is awesome. Piragua, Piragua, dun 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 dun, Piragua, Piragua. Just saw Rocket Man, which was good, says Kabuki Kit, but I prefer the style of Bohemian Rhapsody, where they don't break out into songs spontaneously. Yeah, um, which was not a right. That was not technically a musical, right? They were they were just it was a film about a musician or musicians. Uh, so I get it. Yeah, I did like Bohemian Rhapsody, but I haven't seen Rocket Man yet. Dun 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. Have you see, have you played Hell? I thought you were gonna say have you seen Hellboy? Have you played Hellboy? Any chance of a review? No, I haven't played the game. I did watch the movie, and it was terribly. The new one. Woof. What games are your favorite? My favorite game is Fifty First State. We have a top one hundred games of all time that we update about every year or two years. You should check that out, my friend. Favorite game to play in pandemic-based game? Oh, man, I don't know. Some of the new ones I thought were pretty neat. Like, I like the, in the, the reprint, I mean. The guy who gets to take a special card back and save it, where you can trigger a special card twice now, that's, that's pretty cool. I like that guy, whatever the character's name is oh no I just noticed Ellen Kirby is up in here ah Ellen Kirby 
James and Helen, those aren't their names. <laughs> uh, somebody's asking if I plush for Marvel United. Mm, I sure did. I'm excited about it. Mr. Travis Chaos just showed up. Good morning, sir. Are you still playing Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters? I still own it. I still dig it. Absolutely. Good expansion for that game, too. Uh, what is the most difficult game to teach? Oh, that's a good one. Anything that has a lot of symbols is usually a bear to teach. Uh... There's lots of games I avoid teaching if I, you know, if I can help it. One I avoid is, well, mentioned uh, Race for the Galaxy because it has a lot of symbology. So I end up playing a lot more San Juan than that. But yeah, I don't have a one game that I'm like, oh, yeah, it's the worst. But anything that has a lot of symbols or is a little counterintuitive, you know what? No. I do have an answer for that. Uh... What is that game called from Jeff Engelstein? Space Cadets? Whatever that game is called. That. That. <laughs> Where am I at? Oh, Snapple, do you... I don't have any favorite cards in Everdell. I just play. I don't know what you mean. Where'd you go? Uh, I have not played too many bones yet. Somebody's talking about Kirby. Oh, yeah, Ellen. Z, have you seen the movie The Secret Life of Walter Mitty? No! Stop asking about that film! I just refuse to watch it now, just, uh, just because you want me to see it so much. Forget that movie. <laughs> Have you watched Slings and Arrows, an obscure Canadian dramedy series about a theater troupe? It's pretty good. No, I, I don't even know where I would see that. I've never heard of it. Slings and Arrows. All right, I might have to check that out. Uh, ooh, we're almost out of time here, folks. What's going on? Do you like race two better, player better or with three or four? I think it scales really well, actually. Two is great, three or four is, is also great. Uh... <laughs> did you ever visit a place that you played a game about before? What did you think? Oh, man, I don't know. I've played games about Cuba. So there's that. I get, I'm sure I have. Yeah, I've played games about London, right? And I've been there. I've, yeah. It's cool. It's just neat seeing, like, I, I mean, you get that from pictures sometimes. Where you see something, you know, like someone holding a game in front of the place that the game's about. That's cool. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a good one. James Hamilton says, do you like to listen to music as you play? What kind? I really, really don't. I find it very distracting. I, I have a hard time sort of tuning music out. So if I'm playing a game and there's music playing, I'm really distracted usually by whatever that is. So no, I, I don't like it. I find it really bothersome. <laughs> That's right, Ellen. I told you, I'm always just singing something. I don't know. Radio Raven. 
says ink and gold or diamond they're technically the same game but as far as like the printing diamond is beautiful Z, have you had a chance to play any more Miyabi? Ah, uh, saw your review. Thought, uh, uh, would like to hear any additional thoughts. No, I haven't played since I reviewed it. I played it a few times. Played that like three or four times before I reviewed it. I liked it. I uh, thought it was neat. I thought it was maybe a little samey. There's a lot of towel laying sort of, you know, uh, polyomino type games right now out there. So I don't have one. I don't have my own copy of it. But I liked it fine. I thought it was a clean design. You know, pretty neat. No new information to give you, though, as far as that goes. <laughs> you don't seem to play a lot of heavy games. Um, more than you might think, actually. But have you ever played something with someone that had such analysis paralysis did you had to call a clock on them? No, that doesn't sound like a very polite thing to do or very fun. If I find myself in not enjoying a game because someone is so very slow, I will either A, not play with them anymore, or B, not play anything that might lead to analysis paralysis, you know? Do you like Florida iguanas? Mmm, -hmm. they're delicious. I, I'm gonna grill on the wanna up. I'm gonna have me some guana bits. I wanna put it in the salad and eat it up by mañana. I'm gonna eat some iguana bits. Ba -ba -bum, ba -da -bum, ba -bum. All right, I think we're uh, done here. Now we're, we're talking about iguanas, and I think that's when you know. That's when you know you need to stop talking online about craziness. Everybody, I want to thank you for joining me. It's been fun. Hey, Melissa is in here now. Everybody's in here now. Man, this is cool. This is a place to be. Uh, and so I'm going to shut it down. <laughs> All right, thanks, everybody. I really do appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you have a great day. I hope you have a great week. Play some games. Have some fun. Love each other, everybody. I'm Z Garcia. I'm going to get out of here. See you later. Bye-bye. You've been watching The Dice Tower.